Hello and a warm welcome to this week's video update. My name's Scott and it's been a little while since we did an update here at Xenergy. So what I'm going to do is update you over the month of July, just show you the figure changes month to month in wholesale costs and also just run you through any key events that have happened over the month because it has been very eventful. We have seen prices change quite dramatically and it's important just to cover all that with you. So let's firstly look at gas wholesale prices. On the left hand side, you can see the price changes over the last month. And what we can see is prices have increased anywhere between 22 and 28%. Interestingly here is we are seeing further dated contracts see a more notable increase. Whereas before over the last few months, we have always seen the more 12 month price go up more further uh, than the backdated month prices. So what does that mean? That means really the market is projecting for the energy crisis in Europe to be more longer lasting, certainly into 2023 and 2024. So you might see a high market price environment for longer than we thought. Looking at the graph itself, you can see how it's moved over the month. You can see a very notable upward spike, uh, which happened last week. This was attributed to Nord Stream 1, so that reduced to around 20% capacity levels. Russia are citing they need the turbine back, fitted and installed to increase it any more than that. So that's the saga that's continually ongoing right now. But you can kind of see prices have tailed back a little bit. Uh, this is Monday, so yesterday. And, but we're pretty much at all-time highs. And the last all-time high kind of period we hit was back in March. It's kind of comfortably above that now in terms of the price range. Power's perhaps even worse in some ways. So we have firstly seen increase being much notably more. So we've seen prices increase anywhere between 37 to 47% in price. The other difference is we are seeing reverse where your near term 12 month price has gone up much more compared to your longer term 36 month price. As well as all the drivers affecting the gas market, we are seeing a few more on the power market side, notably the heat waves we've been experiencing in Europe and the UK, which impacts power prices more with cooling demand. And we are seeing one of the reasons why near term power prices are shooting up so high in value right now. They have been on a much more relentless charge up in price. And you can quite comfortably see that in, in the price graph there. So what's been happening over the last week, we have seen three kind of key events occur quite recently. So one, as I've just mentioned, is Nord Stream 1 reduced to 20% capacity levels. This was following its comeback from maintenance where it did originally come back at 40% levels, but then that quickly was reduced to 20%. The market clearly didn't expect that and it did shoot up in price as a result. It has now left Europe and Germany in a very tough spot terms of forecasting this winter at least at 20% flow levels is going to be a very tight winter for Europe and that's not to say levels could go lower so that that has a big impact on prices right now as well as that we have seen heat waves persisting in Europe the issue with heat waves is twofold really one it does increase demand with, with cooling infrastructure coming online also it does reduce your nuclear output and coal output at times uh, many of these plants use river systems to keep their operation cold and cool. Uh, where we're having heat waves, you're seeing one more shallow river system and two warmer water as well. So often it means nuclear plants can't uh, be at maximum output as they normally would. So it's affecting both demand higher and reducing our supply. And then lastly, one thing that did happen over the weekends, which may not seem significant, but has worried the market is Russia have cut off Latvia. There's no reason given why, there's no clear reason why that happened at all. I mean, Latvia have publicly um, stated they're moving away from Russian source gas from 2023, but that's been stated for a while. What this does mean is it's brought more fear back into the market that we might have not seen the end of nations being cut off by gas from in Russia. And it's kind of put that fear back in, into the price again and that being priced back in. Looking at this week, we've got a few key events to look out for. 
Number one is OPEC are meeting uh, to discuss possibly ending the supply cut they introduced in 2020 as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. Now that was a kind of pact made back then to reduce supply given that forecasted demand would be lower. Given we're over two years now uh, from that event, we could see that end and we could see supply actually increase. So it'd be interesting to see what happens there. Oil is really struggling for direct direction right now. Uh, some days it's a, a lot lower, some days it's a lot higher, depending on the, the most recent news, news out of China, news out of US inventory stocks. And obviously this being the latest news, what way OPEC will, will choose to go. The market is definitely expecting, I would say, uh, that supply will increase, but by how much is a little bit less unclear. This week, we are seeing a very busy gas maintenance schedule on our UK continental shelf. So there's a lot of planned outages this week just to allow that maintenance. It's often the case over the summer months where gas usage should be lower. What it does mean is it could leave the UK a little bit tight at times, particularly if wind levels are low. So we did see that um, over Friday and tail end of Monday, wind levels were very low and we did see quite a short system there. And then finally, it looks like Europe could see further warm weather. Um, be interesting to see if it's defined as a heat wave or not, but certainly temperatures are going to be above seasonal norm. The UK, thankfully, is going to have much more seasonal temperatures this week. Um, so I wouldn't say we've got a heat wave coming, but I don't want to rule it out for sure. But certainly in parts of Central Europe, that is a much more possibility. And that's only going to add more demand and strain on the energy network there. If you do want further information, it's always available. So we have our Market Watch Live team, which are available between 10 and 12, every day, Monday to Friday. And then we also have content online. So our daily and monthly reports are published there, as well as other useful guides uh, on the hyperlink, just detailed there. So thank you for watching, and I will see you again for next week's video update.